shout it loud, hallelujah. Of Jericho destroying, hallelujah. I yeah, welcome once again to speaking word to the mountains prayer meetings. And I'm sure there is somebody here tonight. The God of Elijah shall silence your silencers. And every vampire power assigned to drink your blood, they shall drink their own blood to the full. In the name of Jesus. Let's sing this song loud and clear. Jesus is a real man. Jesus is a grandmother. Jesus is a real man. A real man. Uh, sing it loud and clear. Jesus is a real man. Real man. He's 
my mind. Oh, I said, by the Spirit. Oh, shout it loud and clear. It's my day. I'm feeling I'm feeling good. Yeah. two hands to the altar here and as many as are here tonight and they believe the word of scriptures which says believe his prophets and you shall prosper should claim these prophetic utterances I prophesy upon your life that those who hate you they will come to your thanksgiving service in the name of Jesus prophesy upon your life that every shame that the enemy is assigning against you shall backfire on the enemy in the name of Jesus I prophesy upon your life that we are no member of your family as you reached the power of God shall take you there in the name of Jesus Every instrument of darkness assigned against you shall backfire in the name of Jesus. They shall backfire in the name of Jesus. They shall backfire in the name of Jesus. And then every power asking, Where is your God? Your God shall arise and manifest his power. In the name of Jesus. 
the son of your life, the son of your life, shall not listen to the voice of witchcraft. In the name of Jesus. And every serpent and scorpion assigned to terminate your life shall be terminated by the blood of Jesus. Silence now. Silence now. That person who had come to this night service with all kinds of pains all over your body. Right there where you are. The anointing that breaks yoke is going from the top of your head to the sole of your feet. And the spirit of pain is departing from you now. The doctor has taken something out of somebody. I have good news for that person. Everyone has put a replacement in position. Thank you, Jesus. Father, tonight, open our understanding. Father, tonight, speak to our hearts. Father, tonight, help us to war a good warfare. Father, tonight, meet each and every one at the point of their needs. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. And you go to seven person and prophesy to their lives. Say, my friend, your luggage in life will not be firewood but silver and gold in the name of Jesus say to seven persons Shout hallelujah. Let's have a seat. God bless you. As we take our Bibles, tonight it's good to listen very, very carefully. You need to understand this explanation so that you can know how to pray when the time comes. So you'll be able to know how to pray when the time comes. Tonight, we are looking at the problem of pursuing curses. Pursuing curses. This is why I said listen carefully so you know how to pray when the time comes. Being born again does not excuse you from the battle of life, but it gives you the weapons to fight. A man or a woman is a very big fool. If you think all those terrible things you did in the past will just go away like that without any consequence. If you think all those your ungodly boyfriend, girlfriends of the past who have marine powers, who have fish cast spirits will just fly away like that, you are a joker. Being born again will not release you from those consequences. You need to take the battle and fight. There are some causes that pursue. They don't say you will not get to heaven. The devil says you should not pray. But they keep pursuing until you stop them. In Deuteronomy chapter 28, Deuteronomy 28, verse 15. Deuteronomy 28, verse 15. The problem of pursuing curses. It would be nice if you pay very close attention to every word from here tonight. Daima explain the reason behind the tribulations you face. Deuteronomy 28, 15. But it shall come to pass if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God 
to observe to do all his commandments and his status which I commanded this day that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee and overtake thee that is, it will pursue the person and eventually overtake the person in Zechariah chapter 5 verse 3 Zechariah chapter 5 verse 3 Zechariah second to the last book in the Old Testament verse 3 then said he unto me this is the curse that God fought over the face of the old earth listen for everyone that steal it everyone that steal it everyone pastor everyone usher everyone president everyone governor this is the curse that God fought over the face of the old earth for everyone that still shall be cut off as on this side according to it and everyone that swear it shall be cut off as on that side according to it a curse is a terrible influence and it could result in all kinds of things a curse could result in a person living a perverse way of life a curse could make somebody to have qualification for prosperity but there will be absence of prosperity like I've been telling you for the past few weeks, a curse can be transferred down through generations. By being born into a particular family, one could inherit a curse. By being associated with bad people, you could share out of their curses. No matter how rich or how good you are, you cannot bless whom God has cursed. That's why if you join your business with that of unbelievers, you cannot bless whom God has cursed. The manifestation of a curse may not come instant or may not be easily noticeable to start with, but it, it, it develops gradually. Listen very carefully to tonight's teaching. By breaking the vows and covenant of marriage, you come under a pursuing curse. It is better not to marry than to go to court or mosque or church and join yourself to someone and now you began to break that vow that you have made it puts you under a person curse mr fagunwa many years ago had married a beautiful lady but mr fagunwa was poor very poor that day mr fagunwa wanted to jump down from the story building because a rich man drove a Mercedes Benz to their house and was helping his own wife to pack out her things into his car to go to another man's house because the man was poor. But there was a day that that woman and that man stood at an altar and they opened their mouth when they said, will you take this woman? Will you take this man for better? For worse? For poorer? everything and they open their mouth loud and clear i will now they are breaking it a curse follows it's a pursuing curse young ladies young girls you come under a curse if because of you a man begins to hate his wife and begin to beat his wife because of you you come under a curse Anyone who breaks other people's homes, why do you think that God will give you a peaceful home when you are not ready to marry? This is the reason why some of those uh, university graduates who just uh, who do all kinds of things in the campus, they come out and marriage is so bad because of what they have done. You were texting another person's husband with romantic messages. And you are a single lady. Then the woman grabbed the phone from the husband, wanting to read the text message. The man grabbed the phone and smashed it on the woman's head. You, the lady that is texting, do you think you will go free? No. There is a curse on those kinds of girls. There is a curse on all playboys who mess up ladies and dump them. 
some of them are even finding their way to churches. The text is the head to the marriage committee. No. Text is a be there. Drop that one. Text is a see there. Drop that one. There is a curse attached to breaking people's heart like that. I have to tell you the truth now. No God will just be praying. Oh Father, answer my prayer. Oh God, arise. Let my enemies be scattered. Oh my God. Oh my Father. Let every wish come off my father's house. Be buried alive. What you are fighting is a result of a curse of something you have done that keeps pursuing you. Keeps pursuing you. Some of them run out outside Nigeria. The curse of what they are done in Nigeria pursues them overseas. It is those of us who go to whole crusade there with all these things. Sometimes I look at some of them and say, why don't you go back home? What kind of wala is this? Go back home. A girl was somewhere in Europe. She went there. The visa had expired. Yet she went to a party. At the party there was trouble. And police came. And when police came, and, and, and they arrested those they should arrest, they didn't go away. They began to ask everybody in the party, Papier? Papier, s'il vous plaît? Papier, s'il vous plaît? Papier, s'il vous plaît? I just bring out your document. Let's see. She didn't have any. So she was arrested. Immediately they arrested her, her brain said, begin to pretend as if you are mad. So she tore her clothes. I was behaving like a mad person. And the police, ah, she's mad, she's mad. They took her to the hospital and gave her drugs of mad people which she does not need. She thought they were going to let her go. They now put her name on regular, regular customer to that hospital. You have to be coming every month to take the drug, whether you like it or not. And she's not mad. That is a curse that some people think they are running away from and it catches up with them. Listen to me very carefully. There is a curse attached to every adultery. There is a curse attached to every infidelity in marriage. It's a pursuing curse. There is a curse also on as many as cover up their sins. The Bible says, He that covereth his sin shall not prosper. Is that not a curse? It's a curse. He that covereth his sin shall not prosper. This is why some people are suffering. All forms of rebellion against God or rebellion against leadership, disloyalty, attract curses. Korah, Dayton, and Abiram, they confronted Moses. The Korahs were the children of Reuben, the firstborn of Jacob. Believing that they were the firstborn, they rebelled. But then, the rebellion brought curses on them. Somebody sweated, sweated, sent you to school with his or her money. We've had a case like that. Send people to school. A woman struggled to send a man to school. Say, let me work day and night, work all kinds of work, send you to school. When you come out, may I go back to school? You work. All of a sudden, the man came back one day. After the woman has sweated to send him to school. And said, you are too fat. Too fat. No longer interested. Of course, there is an attack, attached curse to that. When a woman puts herself in the position of the husband, she cannot get the blessings of God. The only time the Bible allows you to disobey your husband. Is when what the man is asking you to do will push you to hellfire. It will push you to hellfire. It's a criminal thing. You must not cooperate to do evil with anybody. Despising constituted authority will be very, very dangerous because it attracts curses with it. When your gift or talent, like Aitofer, makes you rebellious against constituted authority, you are heading for a curse. I am the best player. I am the best singing. I am the best this. I can sing well. I can do this well. I can do that. If by your rebellion, you break a system, a curse automatically follows you. I feel sorry for those pastors who come and break churches. Break churches to pieces. 
maybe a church where they know the, uh, the overseers don't come. And so the members of the church, they just see the man on picture, on television. They have never seen it. And the man gets to church on Sunday. Takes the microphone. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, oh. If you see what that in general, I should pretend that this to me, this is unfair. This is unfair. Anyway, oh, oh. I'm not coming to this church again. As from, as from next week, I will be starting my own church. This is unfair. I cannot preach. I'm not in the mood to preach. And the people will break down and be crying. And it takes them away. It's a curse. On top of the head of such ministers. They may run for a while. But they will soon come tumbling down. When a man uses his money. To abuse the integrity of womanhood. is heading for a curse. It is becoming so rapid now. Practically everywhere. Only very few people are ready to do anything for any woman free. Some will even hold on, hold on to the money. So that if you don't cooperate, you won't get it. You won't get the promotion. You won't get the contract. If you are like that, using your money or position to abuse womanhood, you come under a curse. You say, but I did that before I got born again. It attracts a pursuing curse. Which you will need tonight's meeting to break from your life. So that you can be free. When girls, women, release themselves as object of satisfaction to men, and you allow a man to be toying with your body because of money, you reduce God's honor upon you, and you, that woman, you come under a curse. When you, a woman, allow them to abuse your body because of money, you don't love the man, you are not interested, but you want the money. So you allow them to toy around with your body, you are cursed. And it's a problem. And I want you to understand this very, very well. Men and women who exhibit strange lusts, uncontrollable sexual appetite, fathers who sleep with daughters. At least there are about two guys now who are trying to rehabilitate in MFM because their father cannot stop sleeping with them. And whether you believe it or not, there are sons who sleep with their mothers. There are mothers who sleep with their sons. Even women, a man sleeping with his mother who is around 70, 71, 72, they all come under curses. Men who sleep with their brother's wives, men who sleep with their sisters or sisters in law, they are all cursed. This may be why you are suffering. This may be why you don't have money. This may be why the enemy has been stealing from you. Men and women who lie with animals. Men who lie with men, women who lie with women. They all come under curses. Fathers sleeping with daughters, they bring a curse upon themselves. Very, very strong and very difficult to nullify. A woman came here crying in 1997 or so. She was going to work. She got to the bus stop. Somebody said, go back home. Go back home. She went back home. What did she say? Her husband was sleeping with their first daughter. A girl of 19. And the woman entered into the bedroom. Found daddy on top of daughter. Both of them saw her. And they did not stop. They continued. They just hissed. And they continued. And when they finished, both of them went to her in the city room. So you better mind yourself. If not, we, 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 we check you out of this house. I said, really? It's okay. Please, invite the girl. Tell her that the geomantin of her wants to see her. And the girl came. I said, is this true? She looked at me. I said, what's the big deal? What's the big deal? Sex is sex. That is with your father, with your grandfather, with your boyfriend. Sex is sex. Come under a curse. Sleeping with the youngest wife of your father because your father is too old to sleep with them. You come under a curse. Sleeping with your stepdaughter. You come under a curse. Every money you earn from prostitution or whoredom are so abominable that God said, don't bring it to my house. Parents entertaining guests with their daughters. You want contract. You send your daughter to the big man. A man has given you big money. So you want to use your daughter to entertain the man. You come under a curse. Women who use their bodies to get contract, promotion, employment, they and those who grant such employment come under a curse. 
Husband using their wives to get contracts. Sir, I need to go and see the man. You're a beautiful woman. Help your husband now. Help your husband. Help your husband. Your husband cannot have such a beautiful woman. Are you suffering here? Help me. And so she goes out. Old men who hire younger men for their wives. Madam sleeping with houseboys. Men raping girls of two, three, four, eight, etc. All this invite pursuing curses. You might have forgotten that you did it. But the satanic database and record is extremely 100% correct. A woman was brought for prayers. A womb was falling out. She had to be pushing it in. She had to be or sitting painfully upon it. Medical and traditional medicine had failed. She turned to prayers in vain. She groaned and wept helplessly and died in pain. And what happened? Why did this happen? Because that womb has access almost 200 men. 200. Both satanists and all kinds of things was just gaining entrance to the place. And that was the end. Pornography attracts a terrible curse. Terrible curse. All the evil means of getting money attracts a curse. All those who shed human blood to get money, they wash dollar to get money, they tell lies to get money. They don't do anything good with that money. Arm robbers don't prosper because the money cannot favor their life. Because it's the money of blood. It does not help anybody. And I want you to understand it very well. Many years back, I think 1990, we got here in 94, 95. That time we just had auditorium A, just this place. Which which wood and corrugated iron sheet. And a man came here. Some man of God pray for me. If you pray for me, I'll give you two million naira. Two million naira. The one twenty thousand we used to buy the land, it was divine intervention. We bought the Jeremy one twenty thousand naira. It was divine intervention. Those who used to come in those days. You will recall that sometimes when you are coming there, you carry your shoe in your hand and walk with because the place is mushy. And now somebody now came. I said, I give you two million naira. I looked at him straight in the eye. So, sir. <laughs> two million naira. So, yes. I give you that. You just pray for me so that I can sleep. I have not slept for six months. So, sir. I don't want your money. Even if I want, I don't want. The, two, the money you have and you cannot sleep. You want to give it to me so that me too, I will not be able to sleep. So sorry. I don't want. Say, say, you mean you are rejecting it? I say yes. It's not every offering that God even accepts. All evil means of getting money attracts a curse. Are you here this evening? And the way you are making your money, you are just telling lies. Lies and lies and lies. And tormenting people. May the Lord deliver you tonight. Cheating the poor attracts a curse. Cheating the poor attracts a curse. Extortion of money from people attracts a curse. When you tell lies to squeeze out money, such money comes to you wrapped with curses. All the policemen who are taking bribes. And the, the people that are giving you this money, but that with not, it's not with happiness, attracts a curse. So you are better off not taking it. My father was a policeman, he was in the police. And when they bring curse, when they bring cases to police station, he will settle it. So don't fight. You don't need to go to court. His bosses warned him to look here, Mr. Amos, or what do you call your name? This is not your church. This is not pulpit. You are supposed to charge people to court. And get money. Now preach here again. They dealt with him in that police force, my father. For all those who extort money from people in pain. Because most people who go to police station, they go there not because they are happy. It's wrapped with curses. Even some of those damn food drivers, before they give that bribe, they will put it under their bonbon and give it to the person. 
When you tell lies to squeeze out money, it's a terrible thing indeed. When you are filling a form and you are 24, you feel that you are 36. You are not married, you are married with six children. Curses. Stealing the wealth of the dead brings curses. If there's an accident now, there's plenty of money. By the time the rescuers get there, the money will have walked away. When things happen, planes crash, the money there is gone. It attracts curses. Serious curses. There was a man, he was in a bus. Robbers came, started shooting. They shot a man. All of a sudden, from the pocket of the man, fell out a British passport. The man was dead. So this man took the passport of a dead man, found a way of altering it a little bit. And he was using this stolen passport from the dead to travel. He thought he had escaped. Until that day, that he found out for three weeks, he could not urinate, he could not go to the toilet. Doctors looked at him, they didn't know what was wrong. His children brought him for the crusade. And they brought him for counseling. And I said, sir, sir, you are a chief. He said, me? That's rude. I said, you are calling my father a chief. Ask your father. Did he steal something from a dead man? He said, daddy, boy, did you steal something from a dead man? He said, the young man is telling the truth. He found his passport, he stole it. The pursuing causes have now caught up with him. I'm praying for so many people here tonight. <laughs> May God show you mercy. May God show you mercy. Stealing properties of fire victims. Actress curses. Those policemen sympathizers who while accident victims are gasping for their last breath they search them and take away their money and valuables, they bring terrible curses on themselves. Judges who pervert justice, they are cursed. That's what the Bible says. Judges who pervert justice. The Bible says quite clearly they are cursed. Deuteronomy 27, 19 not too far from where we read just now. Deuteronomy 27, 19. Cursed be he that perverted the judgment of the stranger, fatherless and widow, and all the people shall say, Amen. Lawyers who had the guilt, guilty to escape the law, they magnetize curses on themselves. They have the guilty to get free. A man put juju into his compound that whoever comes there at night to steal, we just carry boom and begin to sweep. And really, the armed robbers came there. They dropped their guns. They took brooms and began to sweep. They swept till daybreak until police came to arrest them. When the case got to court, the lawyer of these robbers was saying that they did not steal anything. That they just love their neighbors like themselves. And they started sweeping their compound. Is that an offense? Lawyers who have the guilty to escape. Instead of you to tell the person, sorry, you have committed an offense, this is wrong, what you have done is bad, I can only plead for leniency for you. Causing the innocent to suffer and justifying the wicked because of money attracts curses. There is a serious visitation of woes from this kind of activities. This is a very, very serious matter. And I want you to understand this. That as far as somebody has been cheated, like a widow, and the widow appeals to the court of heaven, the first thing that will be pursuing the enemies of the widow are the curses. Being hired to go and kill somebody else brings a curse on the person. And if you kill anyone, the murderer is trailed by the avenger of blood all his life. He may escape the arm of the law, but he can never escape the curses. When you deprive a laboring man of his wages and you add his fruits to your own wealth, you add a curse to yourself. A curse follows anyone who involves himself in land fraud. Building your wealth on land 
fraudulently acquired acquires a curse. Covetousness and greed over landed property has placed many on the path of pursuing curses. Are you here tonight? Have you ever beaten up your parents? The curse of destruction and death hangs upon you. Unless you cut it off. Say, honor your father and your mother that your days may be long and that it may be well with you. That is, if you have beaten up your parents before, slap daddy, slap mommy. Then what the Bible is saying? That it shall not be well with that person and that the days may not be long. You need to cry for mercy. Are you here too? You have issued curses on God's people before. These attract curses. Preaching of heresies will certainly attract curses. Sleeping with women inside the church, inside the sanctuary, is desecrating the temple of God. Stubborn curses will always pursue such people. If you didn't do it, what your father did, you need to pray hard. It's really, really hard. Stealing on the altar is a sacrilege. And the punishment is generational generational and one of the clearest curses in the bible is failure to pay tight so if you don't pay it i will not open the windows of heaven and i will not rebook the devourer men who share their blessing with other people they live longer they live longer but men who are stingy they get into trouble when you ascribe glory due to god to yourself you bring a curse on your own life. Because he says, I will not share my glory with any other person. And this is what I keep saying here over and over again all the time. The mountain of fire and miracles ministry is not the church of Dr. Lukoya. Dr. Lukoya has no church. It belongs to the almighty God. Just as you are a member of mountain of fire and miracles, I also am a member like you. Because it belongs to God. But once you take God's glory, to trust the curse. One day a priest got annoyed in church at a communion service and poured the wine on the head of somebody there. He poured communion wine on the head of one of his members. He thought that was all. Years later, this bleeding started with his wife. Bleeding. They, they tried to stop it. They couldn't stop it. His own bleeding too started because he had attracted a curse. When you make a vow to God and break it, you come under a curse. It is better not to make a vow before God than to make it and then begin to break that vow. Imagine at the time God needed a man. God needed a man. And imagine that it, it is at that hour that Hannah, who promised to give Samuel to God, went and withdrew Samuel. It's a very serious, serious matter. The pursuing curses, they are mobile. They attract the avenger of blood. They double cross people. They dribble people. They have dancing and swimming power. They initiate people to take many wrong decisions. They pollute people's heart. They interfere in the break breakthrough of people. And they cause all kinds of issues. Objects in your possession can be an open door for curses. Many of us may need to clean up our homes. If you have cursed objects in your home, you come under a curse. There may be pictures, charms, whether for good luck or for whatever. And let me tell you one secret. Those of you who hang crosses on your neck, you are just wasting your time. Jesus is no longer on that cross. If he remained on that cross, you and I were in trouble. He has risen. And the Bible said the dead has nothing to do with the living. And once you begin to put a hole on the head of a cross, it is no longer the cross on which Jesus died. It has changed to another cross called Hank, which is witchcraft curses. And let me tell you another truth. Nobody really knows how, what Jesus looked like. All oh, they put in picture all over the place is a lie. 
that's what the Bible says. Thou shalt not make to thyself any graven image, nor the likeness of anything. Likeness of anything, whether in heaven above or on earth below. I mean, don't make image of Jesus. Don't make image of Mary. Don't make image of Columbia. Don't make image of Amadioha. Whether the thing is in heaven or on earth, don't make it. Don't make it. That's what the Bible says so. Those things, they bring curses to the house. Some are decorating their house with drums. Drums. I know for a drum to sound, it must be beaten. Hard life. That's what some people are putting. They call it decoration. Any object used to worship idol, any fake religious items, brings a curse into the house. Any object that represents false religion, that your popular white garment you used to wear when you were there, instead of you to go and burn it, you convert it to pajamas. And now you are in trouble now. Your dream life is under attack. Any item that has been used by satanic agents to bring harm or good is dangerous. All the astrological symbols bring curses. Contaminated jewelry. And most jewelries are contaminated, really. Bring curses. The reason a lot of women receive breakthrough in the reverse ground sometimes is because they go without anything. But by the time they get home again, they put it on. They forgot that Jacob told his wives, he said, bring, we are going to our land of promise. Bring all your idols. Bring all your earrings. Because in those days, they put idol inside the air. The air is an altar. If God wanted you to put something there, will put a hole there. It's for your mother's room. If God wanted you to be smoking cigarettes, you will have put a chimney in your head when you are born. Because it's not divine design, so it's not so. All the regalia of evil association, regalia of lodge membership, regalia of free ministry, regalia of all those things, they bring curses. All the incense. When you cannot say, Thus say the Lord, I bind you, demon, depart. You've now bought incense. I say, Why are you putting incense in this house? I say, I want evil spirit to depart. Hey, you are just called for a party. Most manufacturers of those things are even satanists. Books and objects identifying with anything related to Satan's kingdom brings a curse. A curse object does not just lie hiding in the house. It will be causing different things and putting evil current inside the house. I've taken time tonight to explain these things to you. By next Wednesday, we now begin to pray on all these things. Right there where you are, beloved. You need to seek the face of the Lord. You need to break the curse. You need to claim the blessings. Bow down your heads to yourself. Right there where you are. And if you know that consciously or unconsciously you have put yourself under this kind of curse, just ask the Lord to forgive you. Ask for his mercy here today. Ask for his mercy. He's here to help you. He's here to help you. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Rise up on your feet now. And begin to sing this song from your heart. Believing the Lord for his touch upon your life. Even as you sing. There is power mighty in the blood. There is power mighty in the blood. There is power mighty in the blood of Jesus Christ. There is power mighty in the blood. In the blood. There is power mighty. In the blood, there is power mighty. Oh, in the blood, there is power mighty. In the blood of Jesus Christ, there is power mighty. In the blood, there is power mighty. In the blood, oh, in the blood, there is power mighty. In the blood, oh, in the blood, there is power mighty. There is power, there is power, the blood of Jesus. 
Immediately the process of this prayer start. Strange healing and deliverance will start. Immediately this process starts. It will be dangerous to keep quiet. It will be dangerous to just be watching. Pray the way you've never prayed before. And pray with a heart of violence like Black Bartimaeus. And if you're in this gathering tonight, and there was a time someone died, and they ask you to go and consult that dead person. You have gone to necromancers. Please find a way to this altar and be on your knees while we pray this prayer. Everybody! 
Everybody who shall this Curses that pursue my parents. I am not your candidate. In the name of Jesus. Something is happening here tonight. I told you. In Jesus' name we pray. Say curses of infirmity. Pray. In the name of Jesus. Your voice is not loud enough. Break, 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 break. In Jesus' name we pray. Strike your right hand towards me at the altar here. Father. Let his hands become the hands of fire. The hands of power. The hands of deliverance. The hands of healing. As you smite any infirmity with his hands. The infirmity shall go back to the senders. In the name of Jesus. Now you will say if you have any infirmity in your body. Smite it 21 times. And you will cry blood of Jesus. Let's go. Do it aggressively. Sapola Kaya Boshenteraba Aha, Aha, Yes, Tonight is Tonight. Amen. Check your body now. Do what you are not able to do before you got here. Yes, that's the power of God flowing through you. From the top of your head to the sole of your feet. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Say, my father! Have mercy on me! In the name of Jesus! Now strike... Yes, as for his mercy. In Jesus' name we pray. As you pray this next prayer, find this meeting tonight. And there was a time a prophet gave you an egg to eat or swallow. Find a way to this altar too. And be on your knees and pray the way you've never prayed before. Everybody will shout this again loud and clear. 
my father's house curses of my mother's house I am not your candidate can you shout that loud that voice is not loud enough that voice is not loud enough Jesus, thank you, Jesus. Amen. Next week shall be devoted to prayers on this. And you will come fasting. And you break after we are finished. Thank you, Jesus. Father, your children are here tonight. Your word tells us as from now let no man trouble me for i bear in my body the mark of the lord jesus christ let the mark of the lord jesus christ come upon your children in the name of jesus let every contrary and writing be wiped off by the blood of jesus thank you heavenly father the lord blesses you from zion make his face to shine upon you in Jesus' name we pray. Let us share the grace of fellowship.